Welcome everyone. Here's another interview for us today uh, for the county council elections. As you know, we have a very special pilot program going on uh, this election season for clean elections, also called public funding, which is where candidates uh, can opt to do the public funding method in which they receive um, their campaign contributions basically directly from the donations of citizens on their um, tax returns. It's two dollars, three dollars, is that right? I think it's three dollars. Three dollars, yeah. So for the price of three double cheeseburgers at McDonald's or one actual cheeseburger, um, you can donate to this fund that is specifically for candidates to run where they're not going to be accepting outside contributions from um, different kind of special interests. Very important, very excited about that. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. We're going to talk about your experience with this whole process. But first, for this interview, I'd like to get straight into who you are, um, what district you're in, and um, how, how you feel about certain issues regarding your concerns in that district. So with us, we have Brittany Smart from District 6, correct? Yes. And District 6 is pretty big. Could you explain where, how far that stretches? Well, it starts out in Hawaiian Acres, goes up through Volcano, goes down through Kau, and ends up um, in South Kona. Wow. So, um, I got a couple different types of topics to ask you. First, let's go okay. through a little bit of personal issues so people can understand exactly where you're coming from. I understand you are a graduate from UH Chilo. Can yes, you talk I about am. your education there? Um, I got a fabulous education there. I had a, the great faculty um, providing that education. Um, a lot of hands-on learning opportunities, which is how most people learn the best, me included. Um, a lot of programs I participated in, such as Model United Nations, Mock Trial, um, basically activities that give you get you involved and teach you what the job is about instead of just someone standing up there and lecturing to you. It was it was a great education. Hmm. And so you um, finished your degree, was it um, political science? Yes. Political science from UH Hilo. Yes. And in terms of, uh, I'm not too familiar with everything that goes on in District 6, are there any community affiliations, organizations you're involved with uh, over in your area? Um, not any particular group. I'm lucky enough where I'm able to actually work in a field I truly believe in. Um, we currently do the green waste for the Big Island. Um, I'm the office manager for the company. Uh, I believe strongly that uh, it's a source that's very valuable to us to be able to take our uh, waste products and make them into a viable product that is used in this case for gardening. Um, so we can grow our own fruits and whatnot, and, you know, be a solution to the waste issue instead of part of the problem. So you're part of the, the people that make the, the big mulch piles yes. that people can take, the free mulch piles? Yes. And that happens, um, is there another transfer station in your district other than, the one that I know of is in Hilo? Is this the one that you guys are working on? Um, we too? have the Hilo and Kona sites for, uh, that's what I work with, it's Big Island Ecosystems. Hmm. Um, the county does bring mulch down to Waiohinu, down in our, my district, but we have nothing to actually do with that site other than make the mulch that is brought down. Okay. Um, and how about a little bit of background on your reason for settling on the Big Island and how you got here and why you decided to stay here? Um, well, my reason for coming here was college. Um, when I was first deciding what college to go to, I got all sorts of mailers and my mom and I sat through and took criteria that I was looking for in a college and if it didn't fit, it tossed it out. Um, the top three that we came up with was Elmira, New York, um, Elmira University there, um, Big Island Eco, or University of Hawaii at Hilo, and then there was one in St. Paul, Minnesota, I don't remember the name of it, and the weather ended up being the final yeah. decision. <laughs> I hear you, that's very important when you decide to go to school. <laughs> Let's see, um, another personal question that I, I, I'm always curious about, where do you get your news from, whether it's international or local news, what mm. kind of sources um, do, you, do you find to be clutch, very dependable sources? Um, well, I tend to, uh, when I'm working, I always look at the headlines that are coming up on the internet, of course, interesting stories. We watch some news at night. Um, I like watching the BBC when we get a chance. Uh, NPR. Listen to a lot of NPR. Um, and those are pretty much the main sources there. Great. Now, let's talk politics. Why are you going to politics in this season? Is this your first time? 
Uh, it's my first time running, but I've been interested in politics pretty much my entire life, and I started getting active in it in high school. Um, I learned at a very early age that politics affects so many aspects of your life, and if you really want to have a say in what goes on around you, whether you like it or you don't like it or you want to change something, you need to be able to step up and participate. And your first and easiest way to do that is vote. Um, the second step is to help others campaign, and the third step is to run yourself. Great. Um, the last kind of personal question, uh, are you reading any books right now, and what book is that? Oh, am I, I think I just finished one. I don't remember the title of it, but it was pretty good. It was about, um, I think it was called The Shanghai's Wife. Um, basically what happened, it was, it was a sad day for me at our mulch site. Someone had literally dumped a whole flatbed full of books really? at the site. And we tried to go through, we can't take them, and so we went through and took out the ones that were good. Hmm. Um, and went, unfortunately the rest had to be tossed, but I just decided to start reading some of them that we got out of that pile. Oh wow. And um, <laughs> that's kind of what decided our reading choice for, for now. There's a little mulch in between some of the pages, but <laughs> other than that, some of them are in good. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the issues going on in your district. Um, one that probably is affecting really all districts here is just the issue of, of uh, transportation. And you, you have a very long, uh, kind of narrow route there. Are you hearing a lot of concerns about transportation in, in your, uh, from your constituents, and what is your response? Well, I think the biggest um, complaint that I hear, anyway, is that once they get to town, they have no way to really get around with the bus system. They think it's a really great idea to ferry them to town, but then they have uh, limited options in order to go to the store, in order to, you know, actually move around town and then catch the bus back home. Hmm. And you mentioned that you would like to instantiate some sort of teleconferencing system uh, for the county council type meetings. In case you don't know, um, or I've been to these county council meetings, they're quite a show. And they, mm -hmm. they have teleconferencing, a great system set up between Hilo and Kona and probably other places where you can see live different people from the community can come and give their testimony via uh, teleconferencing. But this is a capability that's uh, not quite ready for your district or how's that working? Well, um, I see the biggest problem is that we're the largest area district wise. Um, we're the largest land area and we have the least government amount of government services available to us. Um, the closest county councilman's office is all the way in Hilo, but yet the district stretches all the way to South Kona. Hmm. There is satellite testimony area available in Kona, however that's an hour and a half away from most of the constituents. Same with Hilo. Uh, we need to be able, this is the people's government, we need to make it more available to them. We need to be able to encourage dialogue. We are their representatives. They are there to tell us what they would like and we try and help make it happen. That is what our job is about and unless we encourage their participation and allow them to dialogue back and forth with us how are we even able to do that job adequately um, one of the biggest considerations um, I've kind of looked into it a little bit and one of the biggest problems that it seems that we would have is being able to maintain the line that is required to actually conference the um, the the testimonies in and out of the meetings. Hmm. Um, maybe that means that we need to work in some sort of webcam support, but um, making it not an option at all does not sound acceptable to me. And if nothing else, at least have a council office available to the residents that, that live there. There is no council person's office in that district, but yet we have one in Pahoa, we have one in Waimea, we have some in Kona, but yet we have none in the largest district that we have land area-wise. Fair enough. And I guess there's uh, quite a bit of concern about the, with the water situation in uh, HOVE, which is uh, Ocean View. Could you give people a bit of a background and where you're coming from, what your opinions are, just lay that out? Well, basically there was a well that was supposed to be drilled. I guess there has been some work, but the plan has been delayed over and over. The residents have been fighting to have this um, well drilled. We have um, actually had an investigation opened by a representative at the state, Bob Herkes. Um, just trying to figure out where the money went, why isn't the pro uh, why is the plan not on schedule, what's going on with it, why is the water not available. And the sad situation is, is they put a catchment system 
subdivision in the middle of the Kau Desert. To me, if you put that sentence together, it does not make sense to me. The majority of the residents there have to truck in their water 